You posted over 200 comments on the Fall of Ponderosa video. By the end of the video, you'll have seen the most emotional ones, as well as the most information-rich comments that show how much you cared about Ponderosa. You won't believe it, but even a longtime general manager of Ponderosa, that comment brings absolutely new light to the fall of this chain. Let's take a look at some nostalgic comments first. This one is really personal. I came of age at Ponderosa, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Started there as a 16-year-old kid in 1978. Made some of my best friends, got my first car, met my first girlfriend, all thanks to that wonderful steakhouse environment. Wonderful memories to this day, still at age 61. It's amazing to hear these stories from you. Thank you for sharing. For the next person, it was an important step into the working world, but also something else. Ponderosa was my first job in high school during the early 1980s, when they were at their peak. Great times, but I can agree they never really adapted to change. I would still like to find one that is still open for nostalgia's sake. The next person brings up the quality, but also the specific conditions that had influence on the restaurant chain. I think overall, the declining of food quality for buffet restaurants was their overall downfall and COVID killed them off. We had a local franchise Pondos, and they kept the quality high and were always busy as Ryan's and Golden Corral kept closing all around due to poor quality, but they couldn't hold on through COVID. I don't think food trends really had a big impact on them. Good comfort food always has a following. What do you think of it? Some of you really appreciated Ponderosa. I must be different from everyone else. I like Ponderosa, and I never thought about how trendy my food is, and I'm willing to bet in 100 years, people all over the world will still be eating steak, fried chicken, salad, pizza, french fries, mashed potatoes, gravy, corn, and green beans. This person is trying to show how things have changed till now. These type restaurants are almost all gone now. Rustler, Sizzler, Old Country Buffet, and Golden Corral. I miss them. Now, I spend a fortune on food used to go to Old Country Buffet and get Ace, including a beverage for $13 to $14. Go to Sizzler and get a steak and salad buffet for $16. In the 70s, went to Rustler and get dinner for $5 to $7. Now the American eating habits are to go to McDonald's for $10. Here's John's comment. He shared a clever hack. It's a pity we can't use it anymore. Life in a bar band traveling around Ontario, hoping there's a Ponderosa. When you bought a steak dinner, the buffet came with it. Steak starting around $5, but the hamburger platter only $1.95 was considered a steak dinner and you got the buffet. I'd let someone else have my hamburger and eat from the buffet. The turkey salad in Cambridge was the best and Friday was fish day when I'm a fish person. Staff everywhere suggested using paper napkins to roll up extra filet so I could take them out in my pockets. The consistent rumor about Ponderosa was saying they used low-grade meat and soaked it in barrels of chemicals to soften it. All those buildings had a nice sound, a very high headroom. This comment is actually about Ryan's, a competitor of Ponderosa, where this person spotted an actor and a famous bodybuilder. He was known for the 1977 The Incredible Hulk series. Ryan's and Ponderosa are two restaurants I will remember. I once saw Lou Ferrigno in a Ryan's Steakhouse. That man could eat. I remember my dad took us out that day for my birthday. I think we were six tables away. I don't think my dad knew who he was. He was making fun of his eyebrows. And now let's move to some of your comments that are about your experiences at Ponderosa. Check out this person's story. I worked at a Ponderosa once. I had this woman request her steak to be on the grill for a literal 10 seconds, turned over and grilled for another 10 seconds. That's the way she wanted her steak and that's how she ate it. So, not everyone had positive memories. Food in the West is pretty bad for you and not fresh, mostly frozen. In the US, just avoid their chain restaurants, fast food, and supermarkets, and you will avoid food poisoning. Avoid the rural areas. The educated, wealthy urban centers will have a few places that are good quality and safe. Did anyone else experience anything similar to this person? I remember going there once, and the all-you-could-eat mac and cheese tasted like soap, so you wouldn't. And here's an absolute gem among all the comments, left by a general manager for Ponderosa. As a longtime general manager for Ponderosa, this is a poor overview of what started the downturn of the company. You skipped the part where a hostile takeover in 1986 spelled the beginning of the end of the company. You didn't mention the 1987 stock market crash, which forced another transfer of the company. 
He failed to mention that the first takeover stripped the company of both capital and vision for the future. Ponderosa, for all intents and purposes, was a walking corpse by the mid-90s, but you drone on about the changes that it didn't take in the 21st century, at which point it has less than 100 operating units, almost all of which were franchised. A change in a company that was 75% company-owned in the early 80s. To know what killed the company, this video doesn't begin to cover the real reasons, a wasted effort for actual information. It's such a pity we didn't have access to such information before. What are your thoughts about that one? Some of you left some angry comments related with the way you were treated at Ponderosa. I was in the one in a town north of me, and it was the very worst thing that could have been. It took over an hour to get my meal, and when I said something about it, the manager just walked over, looked at me, and gave me back my money without saying anything. I won't be back. This person seems to have been cured of childhood nostalgia. Loved going there as a kid, but as an adult would rather pay extra for a prime cut of beef. Also, their customer service is terrible. Never used to be, but the employees really do not care. The buffet stations were filthy. Some of you had a different opinion than what we presented in our video, but we appreciate all the comments. This guy is way off. Ponderosa closed long before digital marketing. The biggest deal with Ponderosa was discount cutouts. The one that closed in my area had nothing to do with online digital marketing. It was gone by the 90s. It was hard to grasp what happened to Ponderosa for this commenter. I don't understand how they fall off so hard. They were once the place to be, always packed. The last few that were left had turned to very low quality. This one actually has a point. The steaks were a poor quality, and the rest of their fare was mediocre at best, but it was cheap. Unfortunately, that isn't a recipe for success. That commenter's story feels like a scene from National Lampoon's Vacation. The last time I went to Ponderosa was literally the last time. Went in, got in line, then noticed the dishes and silverware had food remnants on them, like they were just quickly rinsed off and not washed. Gross. It was shortly before they closed for good. What are your thoughts? And if you love American food, you'll definitely like the next video.